In recent years, there has been a growing controversy surrounding the portrayal of Mughals in India. Some see them as great rulers, while others see them as oppressors. But why has this debate erupted now? Is it due to the current government stance or the availability of information through platforms like YouTube? Let's find out. What we were taught in Indian schools about the Mughals and other historical figures may not be entirely accurate. Join me on this journey of uncovering the hidden truths and misrepresentation in Indian history. History textbooks suggest that Babur was known for his cultural and artistic patronage, promoting religious tolerance and having a liberal outlook on religion. But the truth is far from that. Babur ruled India for merely four years, from 1526 to 1530 CE. During the peak of the Bhakti movement, when Guru Nanak, the prominent philosopher and founder of Sikhism, labelled Baba a tyrant and demolisher of humanity. Why did he use such harsh words? Because Baba killed over 100,000 Hindus in just four years of his reign. He also committed unspeakable acts, such as raping and selling thousands of Hindu women in Kandhar and Kabul, and destroying hundreds of temples to build mosques instead. Due to his atrocious actions, Guru Nanak Dev Ji was vocal against Baba and even got imprisoned for it. In fact, he cursed Baba in his court, predicting that his empire would crumble and his dream of conquering Hindustan would be short-lived. And soon after which, Baba died and Humayu had to flee after facing a defeat to Sher Shah Suri. But you may be thinking that the Mughals still went on to rule India, right? Well, I'll answer further in the video. For now, let's continue with the story. After a couple of crushing defeats in the Battle of Chausa and Kannauj, Humayu was forced to flee to Iran and seek asylum under the Safavid Shah. However, with the Shah's help, he was eventually able to recapture Delhi and establish the Mughal rule in 1555. Unfortunately, Humayu met an untimely end just a year later when he died in a freak accident in his own library. And that's when things really started to get interesting. Enter Akbar the Great, one of the most renowned rulers of Hindustan. But what made Akbar so special, you ask? Well, for starters, he's often regarded as one of the most secular ruler of his time. Now, before you go thinking that Akbar was some sort of a perfect angel, let me tell you a little story. You see, Akbar had a bit of troubled past and it all started with a curse. Some Malvis had warned him about the curse of Guru Nanak, and Akbar was determined to redeem his family from this curse. So, on his way from Delhi to Lahore, Akbar decided to pay a visit to Guru Amar Das Ji. It was there that he sought out a way to clear the karma of his grandfather's less than horrible deeds. Guru Amar Das Ji, being the wise man he was, imparted some valuable teachings to Akbar and gave him a chance to start new. As a ruler, he was allowed to use force during defense or conquest. Now, did Akbar really stick to his word and change his ways? Well, to a certain extent, yes. Let's take a look at some of the documented facts about Akbar, shall we? One thing that remained consistent throughout the Mughal Empire, including Akbar's reign, was that none of the rulers ever married their daughters to Hindus or gave their sons, even from Hindu wives, Hindu names. Remember Jodha, Akbar's wife? Well, this son was named Jahangir. It's interesting to note that the story of how Akbar married Jodha wasn't exactly a love story. Akbar used to send peaceful envoys to different states, offering them to keep the kingdom under his crown. Some kingdoms agreed, while others, like Amir King Bharmal, refused. In response, Akbar ordered an attack on Amir, capturing Raja Bharmal's three nephews. To secure their release, Raja Bharmal had to agree to Akbar's demands and also marry his daughter Jodha to Akbar, ensuring that Amir would remain loyal to the Sultan. It's hard to see any love in this story, isn't it? Now let's examine how much Akbar really respected Hindu women. According to Abu al-Fazl's Akbar Nama, a book written by one of the Akbar's courtiers, Akbar had a harem with 5,000 women as well as liquor stored there. Whenever he wanted, he could summon a woman of his choice. And mind you, these women were widows of soldiers and kings he defeated. It's worth noting that many historians deny the existence of Harim, but why would Abu al-Fazl write something that never existed? It's a question worth considering. Let's explore a commonly held belief about Akbar and the jazia or the Hindu tax. While it is often said that Akbar abolished jazia, the reality is more complex. According to Vincent Smith's book, Akbar the Great Mughal, some kingdoms that accepted Akbar's condition were exempt from jazia without a fight. But this was not consistent across all captured territories. In fact, many empires, including Delhi and Agra, paid jazia throughout the Mughal reign and it was never truly abolished. Additionally, there are accounts of Akbar's action that paint a different picture of his character. For example, it is said that he ordered a burning of 1,000 families in a small town of Eta and made sadhus fight to resolve a dispute in Thaneshwar, laughing as every single one of them was killed. 
these events are often left out of history textbooks. It is important to consider all perspectives and facts when examining historical figures and events. Now let's move to Jahangir, Akbar's son and the fourth crowned emperor of Mughals. He was known for his love for poetry and was highly educated, setting himself apart from his predecessors. Jahangir was crowned Sultan of Hindustan by his father, Akbar, before his death and ruled for 22 years, during which he fought little to no battles. His reign is often considered a peaceful time in Mughal history. But was it really? Before his coronation, there was a power struggle over who would succeed Akbar. His eldest son, Khuzrao Mirza, was favoured by Akbar due to Jahangir's addiction to opium and alcohol. However, Jahangir and Akbar's wives were against this. And at the time of Akbar's death, he was dosed with opium and crowned Jahangir as the next emperor. Khuzrao, feeling that he was a rightful heir, revolted against his own father and left for Kabul to regroup and launch an attack. On his way, he stopped in Lahore to seek blessings from Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the fifth guru of Sikhism, whom he had met several times before with Jahangir and respected greatly. When Jahangir found out about this, he was furious and worried that Guru's support might help Khusrao in succeeding in his revolt. Jahangir sent his commander Dilawar Khan to capture Khusrao, who was marched on foot from Lahore to Delhi. On the way, Khusrao saw his supporters and soldiers impaled on spears and left to die crying out for help. When he reached Delhi, Jahangir spared his life but ordered that liquid metal to be poured into his eyes and imprisoned him. Jahangir also sought revenge on Guru Arjan Dev Ji, accusing him of supporting Khusrao. He used the excuse that Adi Granth, a scripture compiled by the Guru, contained writing that were against Islam and tortured him. Guru Arjan Dev Ji left his body while bathing in the river Ravi. Despite his reputation as a peaceful ruler, Jahangir continued the tradition of having a harem and added 5,000 Hindu women to it, bringing the total to 10,000 women. He treated them in the same manner as his father had. In the end, Jahangir's reign was far from peaceful. Jahangir died in 1627 due to severe cold and was succeeded by his son Shah Jahan. Known for his architectural vision, Shah Jahan's greatest work, the Taj Mahal, is considered to be one of the wonders of the world. However, myths surrounding the Taj Mahal have persisted and in the following section, we'll uncover the concealed truth about Shah Jahan's life and bust popular myths about Taj Mahal. Let's dwell into the epic love story of Mumtaz and Shah Jahan. Mumtaz was married to Mughal provincial governor Shah Afghan Khan. When Shah Jahan saw her for the first time, it is said that Shah Jahan was immediately smitten by her beauty and tried to win her over. However, Mumtaz was already married and it seemed impossible. But fate had other plans. Shah Jahan killed Shah Afghan Khan and took Mumtaz captive until she agreed to marry him. Although there is no concrete evidence, it is also said that Mumtaz had a son from a previous marriage, who was also killed by Shah Jahan by drowning in the river. After their marriage, Shah Jahan spent most of his time with Mumtaz and had 14 children. Tragically, Mumtaz died at a young age of 38 while giving birth to her 14th child. Shah Jahan was shattered by the loss of his beloved wife. To immortalize their love, he decided to build a mausoleum in her memory. The result was the Taj Mahal, a monument of unparalleled beauty and grandeur that still stands today. But myth and legends have shrouded the Taj Mahal for centuries. One of the most popular myths is that Taj Mahal was built on a Shiva temple called Tejo Mahalya. While there is evidence that the site once had a Hindu temple, but there is no proof of a grand structure in Agra prior to the Taj Mahal. Many travelers documented the Indian Empire during the Mughal era, but none of them mentioned any remarkable structure in Agra. Another myth claims that Shah Jahan chopped off the hands of all the workers who built the Taj Mahal, including the chief architect Ustad Ahmad Lahori. This myth has persisted for years, but there is no historical evidence to support it. In fact, Shah Jahan spent over 20% of his royal treasure on the workers' wages and rewards. Ustad Ahmad Lahori remained a courtier to the Mughals and spent the rest of his life in Agra, which contradicts the myth. The metaphorical story of the chief architect's hand being chopped off contrasts with available evidence, such as the vast settlement called Taj Ganj, which is still in existence today. Emperor Shah Jahan established it to house the thousand of masons, architects and workers who came from distant part of his empire to build the Taj Mahal. The descendants of those workers still live there and practice the skill of their forefathers. After the Taj Mahal, Shah Jahan's worker built a whole new imperial city called Shah Jahanabad in Delhi, which is known as Old Delhi. It would have been impossible to maim thousands of expert artisans and find replacement to work on another equally grand project in such a short time. And now let's continue with Shah Jahan's life. So Shah Jahan's life was certainly full of complexities and controversies. 
Despite his great architectural achievements, his personal life was marred by his treatment of women and questionable relationship with his daughter Jahanara. After the death of Umtaz, Shah Jahan's health started to decline rapidly. He turned to his son Dara Shikoh and daughter Jahanara for support. However, rumors and allegations of his relationship with Jahanara started to spread. Some claimed that Shah Jahan had married his own daughter, while others suggest that they were simply too close for comfort. One account of this story comes from Francois Bernier, a French traveler who visited the Mughal Empire during Aurangzeb's reign. In his book Travels in the Mughal Empire, Bernier documents his experience and observation during his travels. He writes that Jahanara was indeed married to her father Shah Jahan. However, some historians argue that Bernier's writing cannot be taken at face value as he arrived in Hindustan during Aurangzeb's reign when Shah Jahan and Jahanara were already imprisoned and Dara Shikoh was already killed. These historians claim that Aurangzeb may have forced Bernier to write against Jahanara to discredit her as she supported her brother Dara Shikoh. Regardless of the truth behind the relationship between Shah Jahan and Jahanara, it is clear that Shah Jahan's treatment of women was problematic. He had a harem of 8000 women, many of whom were taken by force from the kingdoms he conquered. It is known that he used these women for physical relations, which is a disturbing fact that cannot be ignored. Overall, Shah Jahan's life was complex and full of controversies. While he is remembered for his great architectural achievement his personal life leaves a lot to be desired after shah jahan the most tyrant and ruthless mughal ruler continued the sultanate his atrocities and battle with sikh gurus deserve another video in itself so please don't forget to subscribe and if you have liked the video so far then you know what to do it is evident that the history we have been taught in india is not entirely accurate the portrayal of mughals in the indian schools as great rulers with cultural and artistic patronage promoting religious tolerance and having a liberal outlook on the religion is not entirely true it is important to uncover the hidden truth and misrepresentation in indian history to have a better understanding of our past only then we can move forward as a society and learn from our mistakes stay curious my friends